covering it up. Covering the bear? Yeah. You're Which way do I go? This way. That way? Yeah. Good? All right. Good? Yep. Okay. Kind of. Well, <laughs> what does that mean? It's, 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 let's just do the video. You bigger than me? I am slight. Here, right, I'll scoot, scoot your chair back. No, no, no. We're fine right now. Good? We'll get this figured out, folks. <laughs> Welcome back. Back down in the studio. Yes, yes, yes. And what's... Okay, so this video is hilarious because I want to I want to mention something first. Is that the, the most fun that we have shooting videos are trip videos. But it has been made very clear to us that you all don't prefer those. I mean, our trip videos don't do that that poorly. <laughs> but they don't do that bad, but people love... The, the juiciness and the drama of the... The talking heads. The talking heads. Uh, so today we are going to talk about the biggest beginner backpacking mistakes that we see people make. Yeah. But first, did you see we hit 109 reviews on the iTunes store? Yeah. We hit it. We, we should probably do a shot of bourbon right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> check us. Check out our podcast site. Check out... Um, we got all sorts of fun stuff. We got merch. We got a podcast. Yeah. Check it all out. It's subscribe to the Backcountry <laughs> BSing channel. Subscribe to that. Subscribe to this channel. And we'll get back to the video. Yes. The first mistake a lot of people make when they're getting into backpacking is trying to go ultra light off the get go. And that is something we kind of preach against. You know, we're all about comfort. As Andy says, comfortability. That's a real word. Is made up word. That's a real word. You need to be comfortable out there. And that is might not necessarily mean getting the lightest things you can get. So we certainly did not start out ultra light. Um, we kind of started actually pretty ultra heavy um, and then kind of worked it back as we got better at knowing what we want out of gear systems. Um, but I'll, I, I see people going straight to ultra light, getting the lightest sleeping pad you can get, getting the lightest tent you can get that might be like a super pain to set up. And I don't know if that's the best choice. Well, I don't know. I've definitely seen a lot of people out there who have done that and have been very successful at it. And then they're actually pretty happy to be like, you know, they bought once. That's true. Once. Buy once, cry once. Yeah, that's but, true. But I would say most people don't do that. Um, and I would say it's kind of like learning your gear is an evolution over time. So like oftentimes just like buying the the nicest, most hip stuff all off the bat. Like a lot of people don't have that luxury and you know, you learn your, your, your thoughts and your preferences change. And so sometimes you need an evolution to get there. Yeah. Um, but I would say I do see sometimes people buying like the super most ultralight, most expensive stuff off the get go. Maybe just don't do that. Maybe just, you know, maybe pick one thing to go super light with. You might not like a trekking pole supported non freestanding tent. Yeah. Okay. They're the lightest option, but they're, they can be a pain. And depending on where you're going, you know, that might not be what you want to do. Maybe you want a sleeping bag and not a sleeping quilt. You know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Don't go straight to ultralight. So let's talk about trip planning. And I think a lot of people are, in, are influenced by YouTube and, and other people's channels. But like as a beginner, <sighs> Be careful when you're judging your miles and your trips. And I see like a lot of people like watching YouTube videos and they're like, I like this, you know, I like oh, where this is gone. Uh, oh, Bryce, Bryce. You just, just got to get in that mic like a fist. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fisting right now. You know, it's just like a fist. Get it up there. <laughs> no, just, you know, you watch, you watch videos with people. This, this one's moving. Yeah. Just, just, you know, just like it's two roses. Just don't, don't touch that. Do not touch that. Where were we? All right. You see a lot of people. I, I think some people getting a little too aggressive and maybe not taking the time to truly understand like what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. That's a fair point. And, uh, then you're just going to have a crap time and you're, you might get injured. And if you're with a group of people, you might have to bail. Um, so, and I know you're going to, you're going to talk about something kind of related to this, yep. but like definitely know your limits and, and you know, it's not about crushing miles. Everybody's camp experiences might be a little different, but you know, start out slow. So. I like that. I like that a lot. First time you're going out there, just don't crush miles. Just don't, I mean, do good. Do 10, don't do 30, don't yeah. do 20. Do like a three or four mile or a five or two. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It 
doesn't matter. This is a great segue into the next mistake I always see people make, and you know what I'm going to talk about, and I see it all the time, and it's a tough one to talk about. I know it is. Do not make the beginner mistake of being super out of shape when you go backpacking. I'm not saying you need to run marathons. I'm not even saying you need to do like intense exercise, but do something. Get that pack on, walk around the block, maybe go to your local park, get in some sort of physical conditioning. Backpacking is difficult. It's physically challenging. If you're in better shape, you'll handle it better. You'll have a better time. And you'll have a better time. It'll be more enjoyable. And just, I cannot tell you how many people we see backpacking that. It's not even that they're in okay shape. They're in bad shape. And they're having a miserable time out there, like puking on the side of the trail, like struggling. And then, and then the worst part is like you get to camp and you're so exhausted and beat up that all you do is just go right to bed. And that's just, no fun. It just doesn't look like a good time. It looks, and I don't know, make it, make it better. And like Kevin said, just, you know, just do a little park. bit, just do a little bit, throw the pack on, go yeah. to the park, just do a little do bit, some miles. maybe get on the Stairmaster. Yeah, watch some of David Gray's training yeah. videos. Hey, get on the Stairmaster, watch David Gray, or go to the gym, put David Gray on at the gym, <laughs> and just, just do a little bit. I'm not saying you have to do a lot, but do something. Yeah. Um, it, you're going to have such a better time, and it's just better for you yeah. in general. We haven't touched on that aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, strengthen your ankles and your feet. And, yeah, uh, uh, just don't make the mistake of going out there completely untrained. You will you have a bad time. Yeah, you, I mean, you you literally will be, it, it will be miserable and you will hate it and you won't ever want to do it again. Next thing, and this gets back to the first thing that I talked about. It kind of actually goes against what I just said about not going ultralight, but we made the mistake and a lot of people made the mistake of starting with a super heavy water filter. I think a, a Catadine Hiker Pro, you don't need to get the sore squeeze. Just do it. I, you know, but like, that was a while ago when those were all the rage. I still see a lot of people with heavy water filters um, or go super ultralight on the water filter and get some tablets or something. You know, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you don't need to start with something heavy. I know this goes against what I said earlier where I said don't start ultralight, but you can start ultralight with the water filter. Well, well, that's a little different scenario here. Like the technology has finally caught up where it's normal to have a lightweight filter now. You can get them at any store, they're readily yeah. available. Yeah, um, just get a Sawyer squeeze. <clears throat> just get it. Don't get the micro, don't get the mini, don't get the Canadian Hiker Pro. What's the MSR one? Right. Where they're like, you can drink out of water in Africa with it. I the know. Guardian, don't get the Guardian. That's just expensive. Get, it is expensive. Get the Sawyer squeeze and you'll be good to go. Next mistake. I'm going to be curious how you feel about this. I got one. I've seen people make this. Don't make this mistake. I'll get some hate for it. Don't start with a hammock. Don't start backpacking with a hammock. Don't do it. If it's your first time backpacking. Take a tent. Don't start with a hammock. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> You're going to tell people to start with a hammock? If, if someone came up to you and was like, I've never backpacked before. You're going to tell them to start with a hammock? No, you're not. <laughs> Probably not. No, because then they're going to be like, oh, how do I use this? And you're going to have to spend five hours showing them how to use it. You start with a hammock, but do it with other people. <laughs> That's so, a great caveat. So, so That's a great caveat. Out. If you are going to start backpacking and you want to hammock, go to maybe go to like a hammock forums meetup. Go with someone that has set up a hammock before. I think you're doing it because I think you're saying this for a valid reason. It's more yeah. Tech, it's more technical. It's it just it's it's more time consuming. It's more technical. It's another thing you have to deal with and worry about when you're out there backpacking. Yeah. And honestly, if you're a beginner backpacker, you're probably gonna buy some POS hammock off of Amazon anyway. Yeah. And Don't. It's gonna be miserable. And it's gonna be miserable. I've seen people do this. If you want to get into hammock camping, that's great. Do your research. Do a couple nights in the backyard. First trip, don't do a hammock. Yeah. I don't know. What do you got? Uh, I love this one because I always see like beginners doing this. And it's not that they don't have a place, but they never get used. What? Okay. If you're new to backpacking, just leave the survival knife 
the axe, the machete. Hey, I got an axe. I know. I'll talk about that. You can just leave them at home. You can just leave them at home. You don't need the machete? Are you telling me, tell me I don't need the machete? <laughs> don't need it. Are you sure? Yeah. You don't need what it. What about the survival knife? Survival knife's the big, like, Gerber, Bear Grylls. Are you telling me I don't need my axe? So, I already said that there is a time and a place for things like hot tenting or if you're into really into bushcraft. If you're, my, my complaint isn't that you're that you're carrying them my my guidance is that i always see people carrying them and then they never get any use fair point and so what what people find out is like when you get to camp it's like maybe i don't need like an axe a, mach a machete a saw and a survival knife to process wood are you fire. sure yeah i'm pretty sure you yeah. don't need a machete <laughs> you don't need a machete I mean, i've never seen someone backpacking with a machete i've seen it all the time are you <laughs> kidding me I I'm not, not a machete. Time. I'm with you though. <laughs> don't bring the axe. To on a weekend. Yeah, don't bring the axe. I love it. Okay. Next thing. This gets back to the first point I made. If you are gonna tent, start with a non start with a freestanding tent. I think. Don't start with an ultralight tent. Don't do it. Andy's saying maybe do it. I'm saying don't do it. I don't know. They're more readily available now. More big box. They're just expensive them. and they're a pain. And if you could, you could see the theme here is make it easy for you. Your first time out there. If you're a beginner, our brother-in-law did it as a first tent with a trekking pole tent. And I he, set it up for him. <laughs> he seems to like it now. Um, that's true. He has a freestanding tent now or non freestanding, but I just consider it. They're cheaper. They'll be easier to set up. Yeah. That kind of stuff. All right. What do you got? You got anything else? I got another one. Yeah, I have some stuff around cooking. What do you got? You do a lot of cooking. Yeah, you're gonna you're you're gonna walk into REI as a beginner backpacker. <laughs> all right, you're gonna do it. Yeah, <laughs> and you're gonna go to that cooking aisle, and you're gonna see those cooking kits that have they're like huge. A frying pan. Yeah, like a pasta pot. A you pot. Saute like a, some like stuff. A saute pan with Do like, a double boiler. The <laughs> double boiler. The strainer. <laughs> the cutting board. Wait, hold on. I shouldn't be taking my strainer. <laughs> yeah. What if I cook pasta? You're going to see the cutting boards, the separate knife sets. A cutting board? No one's taking a cutting board. Oh, yeah. They all come in this kit. <laughs> You're going to see like the 10 bowls. <sighs> okay. You just need something to boil water. That's in all you and, need. And to dump it in a bag of Mountain House. <laughs> That's all you need. You just don't need a strainer. You might need a cutting board. I don't know. I mean, Probably not. Okay. There is a time and a place for this. But as we've, ne we've never taken a cutting board. Uh, did we take a small one? We always pre-cut everything. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm just talking beginner backpacking. Like, save some weight on the the cook kit. All you really need to do is boil some water. You're not. You don't really need to saute and drain pasta water. I mean, that's all fun and stuff. But just, just a little metallic container to boil. That's some all you water. need. Yep. All right. Last thing I got here. Last thing. Biggest mistake. I see people doing one of the biggest ones is not testing their gear out before they go backpacking. Nobody does that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Here's what you should do at the bare minimum. You should set up your tent and inflate your sleeping bag. And that's it. I mean, sleeping at the, pad. yeah, sorry. At the bare minimum, you should set up your tent. Oh yeah. Please set up the tent. Please do it. There's nothing worse than being in the rain and never setting up a tent before. And bonus points if like you're in a hammock or sleeping on the ground, if you actually sleep in your backyard or in your basement or something, like sleep in your setup. I know it's tough, but at the very least, you should set up your tent, use your cook kit, bare minimum before you go out there. Yeah, you're not always gonna have the most ideal conditions. And so the more experience you have with the gear, trying to use it and learning about it, the easier it's going to be. And if this goes like tenfold if you're winter backpacking, which you shouldn't be doing as a beginner, meant to say that, you should not be winter backpacking, but if you are winter backpacking, you need to test your gear, period. Yep. So you don't die. Well, that was it. What do you think? I, I can't wait for the comments. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I um, no, this is fun to talk about. You know, we were at one point beginner backpackers. So just, it, just don't stress about stuff. Don't stress about it. Hopefully this video includes some tips that you can use. Yeah. 
um, to make life easier for you. And let us know in the comments about your uh, you know tips for beginners or any mistakes you see people yeah. make. There's always a lot of good conversation going on in, in the comments and good tips from everybody else. We're we're certainly not the experts at everything. So very just, just most things. Very true. All right, that's it. Yep. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good one.